I think there's a tremendous value in showing a hand sketch rendering over a 3D model, especially during the conceptual phase. That's why even with a 3D model, I will often choose to draw over it and show the hand rendering version in a presentation because the client just respond better to this kind of format. In this tutorial, I wanna show you my 15 step process from start to finish in developing a SketchUp view like this into a provocative rendering before coloring. Step number one, canvas setup. My illustrations are typically created on 11 by 17 paper size with 300 DPI. I find this dimension satisfies most situations for sharing on the web and printing without creating an enormous Procreate file size. My time-lapse recording is set to 4K for best quality, and this resolution will give you more than enough if you want to crop in later for social media posts or marketing materials. Step number two, import your model background. Mine are typically from SketchUp, one with line weight turned on for tracing purposes, and the other one with shadow turned on and line weight turned off to overlay on top of the finished drawing at the end. A tip here is to insert the background as a private photo so you don't see this layer in the time lapse when you export it. Step number three, turn on assisted drawing. For this illustration, I have assisted drawing turned on, which allows me to easily draw straight lines without needing to freehand. This is completely a stylistic choice as most of my illustrations are completely freehand, but here I am presenting a alternative option for people that are less comfortable with freehanding. Step number four, testing out the line weights. As always, I will spend the first few minutes testing out the line weights that I'm going for as this is going to have an effect on how much detail is needed in this illustration. And this usually depends on how much detail you want to see at the end. Most of the time, I stick with one line weight for the entire drawing as this is the style that I'm used to from decades working with real pen and ink on paper. Step five, start tracing. With a little bit of prep work out of the way, we can start drawing. It's important to not get caught up in the details when you're starting out. We only want to trace out the bigger mass and geometries in the scene, which I refer to as containers for detailed works to go in. So this could be the cabinet massing, bigger furniture items, floor, ceiling, and walls, and etc. This face is actually kind of mundane and doesn't need a lot of brain power. So you usually have Netflix or YouTube playing in the background. Step six, crop in the view. My personal style also includes a rectangular box that crops into the drawing. And this is optional though, because I think it looks better when there is a container for the color to live in later on. Step seven, turn on vanishing point. Now I'm going to find a vanishing point in the model and then use the perspective tool to aid me with assisted drawing in perspective. To help you find the exact vanishing point, it is helpful to extend the perspective lines into a intersection like I have done in red. And where the lines intersect, that's a clue where the vanishing point is located. Step eight, add a secondary layer of information. Moving ahead, we can create a new layer to start adding in a second layer of information, such as the cabinet style, the window structure, and etc. I recommend you to add this information on a new layer in case they need to be edited out. For example, if you no longer want the shaker style cabinet, you can just remove the inner lines on that particular layer. Step nine, big textures. Also on a new layer, you can start to add information like tile work, wood paneling, and things that could be swapped out. Step 10, embellish with decor. When this is done, create another layer and we can draw in decor like cushions, tables, books, plants, pots, light fixtures, hardware, and appliances, things like this. I generally put all these entourage in one layer because they're generally not overlapping with each other, so it's easy to selectively erase some of them. Step 11, sketch up shadow. We're almost there. Here, I am going to turn on my SketchUp Shadow Export and dash in the outline of the shade. And this is a stylix choice as well as I saw it from somebody else and decided to steal from them. Step 12, smaller textures. There are also some additional textures that I have not added into the scene yet. Like this could be wood, stucco, and textures that are typically at a smaller scale. So I can easily erase them and swap them out for something else too. Step 13. 
adding ceiling fixtures. To add to the realism, that's adding some recess lights on the ceiling. And at this point, I haven't exactly laid out the reflective ceiling plan just yet. So I'll just do this by tracing in the perspective and eyeballing where it looks reasonable. And this is a strategy that I use often. If it looks reasonable in the rendering, I can usually figure it out in plan later. Step 14, wood flooring. I realized the wood flooring is also missing here. We can easily add that in when we have assisted drawing feature turned on. I also put this on a different layer because this could be another material like concrete or a different pattern of wood. So I wanted to make this as flexible as possible to change later on. Step 15, remaining embellishment. Lastly, we can embellish the entire scene with a little bit more detail to the glass, the window, the cabinet before moving into coloring. If you are interested in seeing that process, you can click here to watch it. Thanks for watching.